Welcome back. Uh, for the time being, we're seeing a near-term bounce from the lows of the day. The 17,600 mark has got defended. We were talking earlier today that around 17,620, 17,630. That's a crucial mark that the bulls would like to defend on a closing basis. For the time being, the buy on dip has worked out. But let's see whether or not we can hold on to that level, at least for the first hour of trade. But let's focus on another company and invite our second management. We have CAMS. Uh, that company, in fact, acquired 55% majority stake in Think Analytics. This acquisition is expected to be completed by April itself, and the shares will be acquired at a mutually agreed pre-money enterprise value. To discuss the acquisition, the way ahead as well, we're joined by Mr. Anuj Kumar, the MD at CAMS, who joins us on the show. Hi, Mr. Kumar. Thanks so much for joining, and congratulations on this particular acquisition. A couple of questions, though. If you could tell us, do you have plans on buying the remaining 45% as well in the company? At what value will you do that? And also, if I'm looking at it, in the last year, you did around 31 crores of revenues. At the nine-month mark, you've done close to around 24 crores. Where do you see this business scale in terms of revenues, say for FY24? Hi, good morning, and thanks for having me over. So uh, if I were to just tell you the rationale of what we've done um, in the capital markets, we've been present with a very broad um, RTA suite for mutual funds, fund administration for alternatives, um, KYC, AML services, and a large digital transformation stack what we've been trying to build was an analytics practice. And I think where Think Analytics comes in is that both from a point of view of just data management, data analytics, and then going all the way to consumer behavior, preferences, retention, et cetera. Uh, they would have built a full stack of services and products which are sold in the, uh, in the domestic market, but also the major markets uh, overseas. Uh, that's point number one. In addition to that, you may have noticed that they have almost been one of a duopoly producer of uh, ingesting SMS data to give uh, consumer level insights to various firms, including fintechs. Uh, there are very mm. few firms with that kind of capability. There's a big intersection of that market with the account aggregator market, which, where we want to play. So I think it's at a very nice place where it complements our ability on data analytics and the mutual funds and capital markets, and also mm. has a nice intersection with account aggregator. So, okay, all right. But Mr. Kumar, just to get back, uh, you know, give us a rational. We appreciate that. Could you tell us where do you see this number scaling to in terms of revenues? It should end this year just going uh, arithmetically to around 35 crores if I put in what, uh, you know, you've done in nine months. You see it go towards 50 crores in the coming year, FI24, and do you have an intent to acquire the remaining 45%? If you could quickly answer both those two questions. No, absolutely. So the second uh, question first, we have every intent to acquire 100%. Typically, we want to bring in the promoters and the business both. So it's a staggered purchase where we own 55% now, and we have a call option in the year three and four. So hopefully by the end of the fourth year, we would own uh, 100% of the firm. In terms of revenue growth, they've posted high double-digit growth in the last three years. So therefore, our expectation is that the base of 35 crore will continue growing. Uh, substantially in the current year also. I don't want to give any specific number guidance right now, but high double-digit growth in the last three years from Think, I think the trend will continue this year too. Mr. Kumar, let me just zoom out a little bit uh, on the overall strategy because I believe you're looking at doubling your revenues from the non-mutual fund business as well. You've also got the, you know, the payment aggregator uh, license now. So <clears throat> uh, how much additional investment are you going to make in these other businesses and can you give us uh, an idea of your targeted revenue pie and by when you you see yourself getting there, FI24, FI25? I think uh, what we've said in the past is that by FI27, we would like to double the non-MF revenue contribution from 10 to 20%. It stands at about 10.5% right now. Uh, with, the, with the amalgamation of the Think business, this should straight away go to about 13%. I think the climb up from there to from 13 to 20s, uh, in the next three to four years is entirely possible. And all our other businesses, including insurance and alternatives, are kicking quite well. The payment aggregator business isn't really revenue accretive from a license perspective. We're just moving the business as per statute from CAMS into the payment services subsidiary. But yeah, it's a nice development because it ring fences the market and allows a few players to play. Only those ones who have a license will now be able to offer the services. So, okay. so just, just a follow-up on that, since you mentioned that, you know, you get to 13% with this acquisition and then hopefully scale it up to the 20s in, in due course, you do have a fair amount of cash on the books. Uh, would you be looking at the inorganic route, more acquisitions to get to that uh, stated target of doubling the non-mutual fund revenues? 
uh, we are completely open. We are completely open. So if you see, we brought in a small uh, capital markets uh, participant from Tubal Technologies about a year back. We're bringing in the, uh, the Think Analytics team now in the month of April, we will conclude the transaction. And we are absolutely open. What we are looking for is um, absolutely sharp, incisive synergies and our ability to go to market together and a product suit which com uh, complements us. So we will not venture into too many new areas, but subject to those conditions, uh, absolutely. Revenue and book build out, I think, is a primary objective. Okay. Um, Mr. Kumar, good morning. Uh, you know, you started by saying that you're looking to build a stack of services and products in the analytics practice space. So anything else that we can look forward to in terms of any more inorganic acquisitions? Uh, what is the cash on the books that you have, perhaps that you've outlined for such acquisitions in future? Uh, so typically, if you see uh, our cash generation has been very strong, it's a low capital deployment business. We dividend out almost 60 to 65 percent of the cash flows every year. So cash position is accretive today. Uh, Pre-acquisition, the cash position would be just short of 500 crore. So I think we have the book and the balance sheet to be able to do these things. But like I said, we don't want to just hastily jump into just anything. But wherever we find deep synergies with a strategy, we will certainly bring in uh, lumps of revenue and smart founders who've done good work in the markets. So anything that, uh, with this 500 crores of cash, anything that you would look at in this calendar year or you're not yet? Uh, this calendar year may be difficult. I think this calendar year will okay. be just busy uh, bringing this team over and making sure that we are able to expose our franchise to their mm -hmm. unique capabilities and build a revenue book. I think that's a first priority. And once we've stabilized this, we've taken a breath, and then we'll move on to the next. Okay. So nothing in this calendar. I got that. I wanted to ask you, you know, there's an uh, expectation of SEBI implementing this total uniform total expense ratio. Uh, if and when it comes through, what do you think the impact would be on a business like yours? Uh, I've said in the past, and I'll say the same again, that we sell a deeply embedded value to our clients at prices of delivery which continue to come down every year. So I think uh, it's a deeply economical model and very, very central to the mutual funds arena. Uh, whatever is being said about the regulator bringing down TERs, our estimate is that some part of that will certainly happen. We can all speculate what will happen. It will perhaps become clear in the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, we expect that we will be uh, continuing to demonstrate value to our clientele. And therefore, uh, if you're, the intent of your question is that does that mean pricing compression for us? We don't believe it will do that. We believe that we are enhancing the value to our clients and they'll be willing to pay the price that we charge. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Kumar, before we let you go for FY24, if you could give us a couple of targets. What kind of a revenue number are you looking at as well as margins? A rough band will do. Uh, I think all depends upon uh, how mutual fund assets behave. You know that this has been a tough year coming over FI22. So in FI24, like you know, if mutual fund assets do grow in the teens, in the mid to high teens, uh, there's every possibility that we will grow uh, revenue by about 13, 14%. So a lot of that is contingent. I don't want to give a firm answer because you know that we are at the end of the food chain and a lot depends upon how the markets behave. Okay, and Mr. margin, rough margin band, uh, mid-teens, uh, we, we got that in terms of revenue growth. Uh, so we will hold our, our operating EBITDA margins even in tough years have held over 40%. And we are confident that we will continue delivering that. I think if you've been watching the quarterly numbers, we've been in the 43, 44% range, irrespective of very, very, uh, I would say, soft uh, revenue build-out numbers. So we're confident of early to mid-40s on operating EBITDA even in the coming year. Okay, so margin in the 40s. Uh, Mr. Kumar, uh, can we uh, sort of end by asking you a little more on uh, this payment aggregator business? Exactly what, what is your plan there? Uh, what's the revenue potential? How do you scale it up? Uh, so payment aggregators, you know, is an established business. We've been uh, servicing mutual funds, um, asset managers, NBFCs, etc. And own about 50% share of our mutual funds in the SIP and mm -hmm. eNatch book. Uh, that part will continue. Okay, all right, uh, we'll uh, leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, that's uh, CAMS on understanding the synergies between the Think Analytics stake and what happens with, uh, you know, the business itself. Um, the stock is under a bit of pressure down almost seven-tenths of a percent, but the management is trying to build the 